What's up everybody, this is Carl from Techful Goodies and today we're taking a look at another 4K webcam. This is the Obspot Tiny 2 camera. It's a point tilt zoom PTZ camera and it has a built-in gimbal that allows you to basically track yourself, all that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take a look at the camera and what comes in the package. Then I'll jump over and we'll test out the footage. We'll test out the software and, and just see how it works. So again, this is the Obspot Tiny 2. It does come with this nice little carrying case here. I think that's super nice to be able to take with you if you're going back and forth to work or if you want to sort of travel with this, you can do so. So in the case here, you have the camera itself. Like I said, it is a PTZ camera. So you'll see it does have this gimbal, allows it to pan, tilt, and zoom if you want to sort of track yourself. It also comes obviously with the cable. It's a USB-C to USB-C. That's going to give you the fastest sort of recording rate. So you can do up to 4K, 30 frames per second. It also comes with a magnetic mount to go on your laptop. And it also comes uh, with a little converter here that basically takes the USB-C to USB-A. Uh, I don't suggest doing that because you really want that full bandwidth. If you're just doing 1080p, that'll work fine. So with the Tiny 2 here, it really does make it simple. All you have to do is you can A, use this little bracket here to put on to your laptop. It does magnetize there so you can take it on and take it off. It also has the small tripod screw, which I'm gonna be using here in a minute. I'm gonna try to match the camera that you're seeing here, which is my Canon M200 mirrorless camera. Uh, so that we can kind of get a comparison when I switch over. And then simply on the back, you just have the USB-C connection. And as far as some of the stats, I think, uh, which are important for this camera, I always say this, right? So give me all the stats you want on a stat sheet, but let me see what the video sounds like and the audio sounds like, because without those two things excelling, then you don't have a product. I have tested some of their other products in the past. I did a comparison video with some other products. And I have been extremely impressed. So you'll see as we go through here how that looks. And as far as some of the uh, sort of high level stats you might be interested in, it does have a one over 1 1.5 inch CMOS sensor. Now a sensor is important because that's the amount of light that gets let into the camera in low light situations. You may have your situation like this where you have all your lighting set up and that's fine, but if there is low light, that sensor is going to let a lot more information into the camera and really work well. It has an aperture of f 1.9. It does have four levels of zoom, but it also has auto and manual focus. So if you are showing something close to the screen, I'll, I'll show you all these things as we go. Um, so I'm just going to breeze through these real quick. Minimum focal distance of 10 centimeters. It'll do 4K, 30 frames per second, and on down to 15 frames per second. 1080p 60, 720p 60. It does MJPEG YUV H264, which is good for the different compression methods you might want to use. And it also has support for HDR. So let me go ahead and just get this sucker hooked up uh, and then we will test it out and test out the software. Alrighty, so now we've got this all set up. You can actually see right here in front of me, I've got a tripod with the Tiny 2 on it and it's gonna be good for us to basically switch over from my mirrorless camera here to this so you can kind of see a quality difference. So let me go ahead and just switch over. Alrighty, there we go. We have switched over to the Tiny 2 camera. Like I said, it's right in front of me here. And this is just sort of the general standard. I've just plugged this in for the first time and this is what the software is using. I am currently still using my microphone that I normally use and we'll switch over and do a raw audio test here in a little bit. But this is it, this is the quality you can expect from sort of the 4K recording. There is autofocus, so I'll go ahead and give that a try real quick and that's where kind of that aperture comes into play. So I'll go ahead and put this up to the screen here. So as you can see, it's now focusing on this case and you can see how detail the focusing can get. But if you look at the background, it is now blurry. And what that's doing is basically as it focuses on me or it's gonna focus on the case here, the, you'll see how quick that's gonna focus back and forth. And I am looking at it on the monitor here, so you might see me look to the right every once in a while. But you can see as from the preview that I'm looking at here, you can see how crisp and clear these cameras are at their 4K resolution. Even at 1080p, they look great. And the problem I've had in the past with webcams is that they promise 4K or they promise 1080p, but they just look muddy and crappy and this looks really, really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at this software here. I'll overlay the actual software over top of the video that I'm recording here so you can kind of see it affect the video that I'm looking at in real time here. Okay, so this is the Obspot Center and you can use the Obspot Center to sort of control all the features of the camera itself, but you could also use something like uh, OBS to stream your 
feed out to Twitch, YouTube, all that kind of stuff, because it allows you to do sort of a virtual camera. Now, when you're using a webcam, you can't particularly use a webcam in two different softwares. Obspot Center will go ahead and send that video signal out to be used in another software like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, uh, GoToMeeting, all those different things, as well as OBS to be able to use that feed in whatever you want to use it in. So if we take a look here at the center itself, you're presented basically with a really sort of comprehensive set of things you can do. You have standard motion tracking, normal tracking. It'll track your upper body, close up, headless, lower body. So what that allows you to do is basically move side to side or if you're, let's say you had a cooking channel or something like that, you could walk around behind the counter and it will follow you. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the hand gesture to turn the tracking on. All right, so it is on standard tracking. So if I was walking around the table or trying to demonstrate something over here, or if I wanted to demonstrate something over here, I could do that. And the good thing about the tracking is that you can have it track like your upper body or just your face. So it can kind of like track whatever you want it to track. And then that does show the power of kind of that pan, tilt, and zoom. There's also presets. And the good thing about this is that because this has sort of that sort of AI tracking built in, you can use voice prompts if you want to set between your presets, okay? There is a, a view in gimbal, so you can actually control it. So if I want to go ahead and pull it left, or pull it right, I can do that. And then at the bottom here, you do have your control over your wide, medium, and narrow zoom. So if I go ahead and go into medium, let's say I didn't want to show as much as my room as I was doing that, I can I can zoom in a little bit there, and I can get in a little bit closer based on, let's say I'm doing a actual zoom call or something like that, and I want to have a little bit better framing on my face, I can do that. And then I have actual fine control over the zoom, so I can, I can do that. You can also do that with hand gestures and stuff like that, but I personally like to have that find control right here in the center itself so that I can control the zoom. Under the image tab here, you have all the things you would expect. Let's say you have your autofocus mode global or with the face, so it'll focus on your face or focus on the room. Auto exposure, currently I have that off. I like to make sure to control my exposure so, so the exposure isn't shifting in and out based on maybe what's brighter in the screen or not. Um, I have it on 160 and ISO of 300. It's nice to be able to control that specifically uh, because I am recording at 30 frames per second. Uh, white balance, and then all your image settings here. So if I wanna make it a little bit more sharp and a little bit higher contrast, maybe I want it a little less saturated, I can do so. Like to me, that's like super important because as someone who does these videos, wants them to look a specific way or match a different camera or match mine up, the camera shooting down here, I can do so. Uh, it does have an auto sleep mode where if it does go into sleep, um, the privacy is really important. So it'll actually turn away from like recording. So you'll see that it's not going to be recording you, but it'll actually go into a hibernation mode. Then you know someone's not peeking in on your camera. And here's the gestures, lock target, zoom, dynamic zoom. Uh, you can do that with your hands, but here's all the different voice prompts you can use like zoom in closer. Zoom in closer, zoom out further. So you can see you can actually control it by your voice, which is really nice. Like I said, if it's tracking you from across the room and you wanna be able to control it like that, it's way better than having to jump on here and actually change it. And again, there's a ton of different settings. I'll just kind of scroll down here as I'm recording so you'll be able to see them all. So let's go ahead and do a quick audio test uh, just so you can hear exactly how the raw audio sounds. Test, test, test. One, two, three, four, test, 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 one, two, three, four. Uh, this is the audio, raw audio, unfiltered directly from the Tiny 2. This is what you can expect to hear if you're using it in something like a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting or something like that where you're using the raw audio directly from the camera itself. So there you go. That really gives you an idea of kind of the quality of the camera itself as well as kind of the features that you can use. I mean, I love having a camera that not only has such a great quality image as well as audio, but I also like being able to control it however I want to. I think one of the things you need to make sure, uh, and they state this in their information, is that if you're gonna use it on your computer, if you don't have a computer that meets the minimum specs, you're gonna have a hard time recording 4K. My computer here that I just use on my desk actually is right on the cusp. 
So if you see any slowdowns in the videos that I'm showing you, it's just because my computer's chugging a little bit for the full 4K resolution. 1080p, absolutely no issues. You don't have to worry about that. That'll pretty much always work. But if you're trying to get that 4K resolution, you wanna make sure that you check the specs on the website that I'll link down below to make sure that your computer can handle it. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it for this review of the Tiny 2. I'm really impressed just by their whole lineup. Definitely check this out. I'll leave the link down below. If this helped you out, please, please, please give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. I'd love to see you back. But until next time, this is Carl from Techful Goodies, and I'm out.